Hey, everybody. This is Craig Maynard, and I would like to show you a couple of very key things you have to do when you're first setting up your FTC control system and Android phone. So I'm going to show you how to upload the most recent versions of all the software and all these as of, we're talking about July 8th, 2021 at this point. Maybe it might be a newer version by the time you get there. So to do this, you're going to need your control hub, and you're going to need your battery for the control hub. Uh, maybe the switch as well. So I'm gonna take this control hub right now and while I'm talking about the Android, I'm gonna let it boot up. So I'm plugging it into the battery and I'm just gonna let it boot. Now, you're also gonna to need to have your Android phone. You're gonna to have to have a micro USB uh, plug in the bottom and have it plugged into your computer. We're also gonna download a special program called the uh, Rev Hardware Client and we'll do that in a second. But before we do that, we have to make sure that our phone is in a special mode of operation called developer's mode. Now, you only have to do this once. Once it's in developer's mode, it's always in developer's mode. So this is, if it hasn't been done yet, let's do it. So how do you put it in developer's mode? Well, let me just share my screen here. Share the screen. And uh, there's my phone. So let's go into setup. We're gonna go into setting and way at the bottom of the setting down here, you're gonna see something that says about, about phone 7.1.1, that's my version, All right? Double click on it and uh, this will be the phone status. Now, if you roll down to the bottom, you're gonna see something called build number. Now, this is the back door to get into developer's mode. Uh, to get into it, you click on this thing about seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it says, no need, you are already in developer. Well, I am, you might not be. So if, you, uh, if you're not in developer mode, it's gonna come up and say, you wanna get in developer's mode? And yes is the answer. Once you're in developer's mode and you go back, there should be a new option open for you called developer options, right? If you go into developer options, you'll see a number of, uh, number of check boxes, but you want to have uh, the debugging, USB debugging, turned on, you, it defaults to off. So you'll have to turn this on. And that's gonna allow you to do some actions on your phone through the USB port that are kind of something most common users don't have to worry about. But we're technical, we're first robotics programmers, so we're gonna have to get into the USB debugging. Now, if you have it in USB debugging mode, you can now go back and we wanna load up the FTC driver station. Now, either yours is out of date or maybe it doesn't exist at all. So you have to get that FTC driver station loaded up. In the good old days, we used to be able to go to the Google Play Store and we could download it from there. Uh, not anymore. Um, now you have to do something using the uh, Rev hardware client. And I'm gonna show you how to set up the Rev hardware client. So uh, in order to get the Rev hardware client software running, uh, the quickest way is to go to Google and to uh, download and, and do a Google search for Rev Hardware Client or go to docs.revrobotics.com slash rev-hardware-client slash. Either one of those, search it. It'll be first on, was the first on my list. Or you can go directly here and you should see this page. Download the latest Rev Hardware Client and install that puppy. Okay. Once your Rev Hardware Client is installed, uh, you should, I'm going to, just make a quick change here, FTC. Uh, okay, uh, once it's installed, you should see this page pop up. I'm just gonna refresh my screen right here. You should see the Rev Hardware sci uh, Client pop up. Now, if your phone is powered up, charged up, ready to go, and plugged in through the micro USB into this computer, and you've got it in developer mode, you should see the Android device show up right here. There's your phone. Click on that and you should see uh, a little thing here that says you don't have your driver station app. And if you don't have the driver station app, mine's already downloaded. But if you don't have one, you download yours. Okay. If you want, you can also use this to update it. Uh, right now, mine is up to date, but it, my current version is 6.2. But if your version is, say, 5 or something like that, uh, you, can, you can upload it, uh, you can install it uh, from this menu, and that'll actually get your driver station up to date. So you can load your driver station, and you can update your driver station with this one app. In my case, 
I'm loaded for bear. My driver station is ready to go. How cool is that? All right. Now, the next thing I want to do with the Rev Hardware client is I want to be able to hook up my, uh, hook up my control hub. So to do that, I'm going to have to uh, take my control hub and hook it up to the Wi-Fi of this computer. Now, hopefully this computer isn't the one we're actually using for this video, because once I hook up the Wi-Fi of this computer to my control hub, you're going to lose connection with the internet. That's all very normal. So just give me a moment. I'm going to stop sharing that screen. I'm going to share my other screen right here. Uh, we're going to share this screen. All right. And um, I'm going to go to my network. And right, you should see all your Wi-Fi networks down here. Uh, there's all my home networks and things. But here's the robot network. My robot network is called FTC B014. Yours may vary, right? Very often, you'll actually see it printed on the back of the uh, robot or, or somewhere convenient. But it'll be, if your robot control hub is turned on and the light is green, you should see your network there. So I'm going to double click on it. And I'm going to connect. And yours may ask you for a password. Uh, the default password is password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, all lowercase, right? And so uh, my, my, my uh, network will quickly connect and I should be hooked up. So now I'm going to stop sharing this screen. I'm going to go back to my second screen that has my, um, my hardware client on it. So now you can see uh, the hardware client shows my phone, which is still plugged in. Uh, to my USB connection and my control hub. My control hub is connected wirelessly. So if I click on the control hub, go to the update screen, if I click on the control hub, I see uh, the control hub operating system and I can bring it up to date. If it's, mine's already up to date. I can go to my robot controller app, which is very important and I can update it. Mine's already downloaded and uh, installed, but yours may need to be downloaded and installed. If it says up to date, and then you're fine. And also your hub firmware, uh, you can download and update that as well. Now my current version is 1.8.2, and we're talking, oh, July 8th, uh, 2021. So that's what we're, that's what was modern back in these days. Um, but this one, so this one doesn't need, yours may need updating, okay? So if, if uh, you update all those things and get it running, you should be ready to go. Now, the other cool thing about the Rev Hardware Client, I'm just going to open this up full screen, is I can actually go in here and program from this Hardware Client. If I click on Blocks right now, I can see all my existing programs that are in my Robot Control Hub. I can create a new op mode. I'm going to tell it here. Oops. Here it is. Here it oh, is. I can't type and talk. Okay. Okay. Capital. I don't mind. So I can create a new op mode. And, and away I go. So I can program uh, my robot from, uh, from the hardware client, which might be easier than going into the browser. Now, other, now the next thing you might want to do is connect up your Android phone to your control hub. So the Android phone is now paired with your control hub. Well, now that our operating systems are all good in the phone and the operating systems are all good in the control hub, let's do our pairing. So I'm gonna wake my phone up here. Okay, and let's go to, let's go to the uh, control hub. So if we, if we run it now, we should see the FTC driver station that we just installed from the device hub, uh, device driver, um, ready to go. So I'm going to double click on that. We should see this beautiful red screen. Now, uh, at this point, I want to pair it with my robot. Now, how do I pair it with my control hub? Click on the three dots. Go to settings. When you're in settings, we want to choose the pairing method. Now we have a control hub, so we're gonna choose the control hub as the pairing method. If you have a, an Android phone and an expansion hub on your robot, then you'll use Wi-Fi Direct. But we're gonna use control hub. Greatly simplifies things. Now that we've got our pairing method set up to control hub, we're gonna pair it with the robot controller. Now my current robot controller is already set up 
to my control hub because I've done it before and it remembers. You might not have your setup. So you have to go to Wi-Fi settings uh, and then you would look at all the Wi-Fi access points available. One of them should be your control hub. If your control hub is turned on and the light's green, you should see it. So you can click on this, select it, and, uh, and enter a password if it asks for it. Again, the password is password. Um, and you should be set. So once it's connected and your current robot controller is connected and you go back to your um, driver station, you should see the screen looks just like this. You should see a ping. Uh, mine's about two milliseconds. You should see the network you're on. My network is the name of the control hub, FTC B014. And you should see a battery right here. The battery level is 12.56. And this is the battery of the uh, the battery of the phone. So we have the battery of the robot controller, uh, the control hub, I mean, and the battery level of the phone. So we are now loaded and ready to go. Uh, I can see my programs. If I click this arrow right here, I can see all my my tele up my my programs that are ready to run, and I am now ready to program my my robot. Now there's two ways to program it. Uh, first way I already mentioned to you. And I'll just set this aside. The first way I already mentioned it to you is using the uh, Rev hardware client. And it's quite easy. Uh, all you have to do is when you're in your Rev hardware client, like this in, in the update screen, you may notice the program and manage screen, all right? Click on that and you should be able to get into your programming. Now you may find that if your screen is minimized and you go to program and manage like this, you don't actually see the program screen uh, show up and that's just because you just, they're in the sidebar menu here. You could just expand your screen, full screen, and then you see your blocks and you can go straight into blocks. So that's the first way and the, maybe the easiest way of connecting up and programming your robot if you have the hardware client. The second way is you can hook it up uh, using any browser uh, if you connect the Wi-Fi of the computer with that browser to your control hub. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to bring up Chrome right now. Now, what is the Wi-Fi address I have to worry about? Well, to figure out the Wi-Fi address that I connect to, to program my control hub, I click on the three little dots and I go down to program and manage. And then my phone tells me that this is the address, 192.168.43.1, full colon, 8080. That's the, that's, the, that's the IP address to connect up to our phone. Um, so all I have to do is go to my, uh, go to my web client and type in 192.168.43.1 on my browser. And uh, you should get a screen looks just like this. This is a good sign. This screen is being served by the control hub. Uh, I can now click on blocks. I can now create a new op mode. And I might say uh, test one, two, three is the name of my op mode. And I'm going to choose a sample program. Ba basic tank drive is my uh, can sample. Click on OK. And I can program this way as well. Right? So I can program using a browser, any browser that's connected to the Wi-Fi that's supplied by the control hub. Or I can do it uh, through my Rev hardware client. All right, so this little video, I showed you how to update all your software, how to make your connections, how to pair the two de devices together, and how to get the systems both working uh, efficiently and cleanly. So now we can get on to learning how to program our, uh, our FTC robot in both teleop and autonomous mode. Hope this helped. If you have any questions, please uh, just drop me an email at cmaynard at firstinspires.org. I'll be happy to help you. Good luck and uh, thanks for everything you do for the kids.